how many people are involved with good design. So if we looked at Swift, but look at yeah. historically, I mean, this might touch like, uh, it's almost like a Steve Jobs question too. Like how much dictatorial decision-making is required versus um, collaborative. And we'll talk about how all that can go wrong or right. Yeah. But yeah, well, well, Swift, so I can't speak to in general, all design everywhere. Uh, so the way it works with Swift is that um, there's a core team. And so core team is uh, six or seven people-ish, something like that, that is people that have been working with Swift since very early days. And so and I, by early days, is not that long ago. Okay, yeah. So it's <laughs> it, it became public in 2014. So it's been six years public now. But um, but still, that's enough time that there's a story arc there. <laughs> okay, right? yeah. And there's mistakes have been made that then get fixed, and you learn something, and then you, you know. And so uh, the, what the core team does is it provides continuity, and so you want to have a, okay, well, uh, there's a big hole that we want to fill. We know we want to fill it. So don't do other things that invade that space until we fill the hole, right? There, there's a boulder that's missing here. We want to, do, we will do that boulder, even though it's not today. Keep, keep out of that space. And the whole right. team remembers of the, the, remembers the myth of the boulder that's there. Yeah, yeah. There's a general sense of what the future looks like in broad strokes and a, a shared understanding of that combined with a shared understanding of what has happened in the past that worked out well and didn't work out well. Um, the next level out is you have the uh, what's called the Swift Evolution Community, and you've got, in that case, hundreds of people that really care passionately about the way Swift evolves. And that's like an amazing thing to, again, uh, the core team doesn't necessarily need to come up with all the good ideas. You got hundreds of people out there that care about something, and they come up with really good ideas too. And that provides this like tumbling, uh, rock tumbler for ideas. Mm -hmm. And so the the evolution process is you know a lot of people in a discourse forum they're like hashing it out and trying to like talk about okay well would should we go left or right or if we did this what would be good and you know here you're talking about hundreds of people so you're not going to get consensus necessarily you're not obvious consensus and so there's a proposal process that uh, then allows the core team and the community to work this out and what the core team does is it aims to get consensus out of the community and provide uh, guardrails, but also provide long-term, make sure we're going the right direction kind of things. So does that group represent like the, how much people will love the user interface? Like, yeah. do you think they're yes. able to capture that? Well, I mean, it's something we talk about a lot. It's something we care about. How well we how well we do that, it's up for debate, but I think that we've done pretty well so is, far. Is yeah. the beginner in mind? Yeah. Because like, yeah. you said the progressive disclosure complexity. Yeah, so we care a lot about uh, a lot about that, a lot about power, a lot about efficiency, a lot about, there are many factors to good design, and you have to figure out a way to kind of work your way through that. And So if you like think about, like a language I love is Lisp. Okay. Yeah. Probably still because I use Emacs, but I haven't done anything, any serious work in Lisp, but... It has a ridiculous amount of parentheses. Yeah. Uh, I've also, you know, with Java and C++, uh, the braces, um, you know, I, I like, I, I enjoyed the comfort of being between braces, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and let, then let's Python talk. is really, sorry to interrupt, just yeah. like, and last thing to me, as a design, if I was a language designer, uh, God forbid, is uh, I would be very surprised that Python with no braces would nevertheless somehow be comforting also. So like, I could see arguments for all of these. But, but look at this, this is evidence that it's not about braces versus tabs. Right, exactly. You're good, that's a good point. Right, so like, point. you know, there, there's there's evidence so, that- But see, like it's this. one of the most argued about things. Oh yeah, of course, just like but, tabs and spaces, which it doesn't, I mean, <laughs> There's one obvious right answer, but it doesn't. It doesn't actually matter. <laughs> What's that? Not, let's not, okay, let's, come on, we're yeah. friends. Like, come on. Like what it. are you trying to do to me here? People are gonna. Yeah, half the people are gonna tune out. Yeah. Um. So. So. But, so but, these, but, you're but able then, to identify things that don't really matter for the experience. Well, no, no, no. It's, it's it's always a really hard. So the easy decisions are easy, right? I mean, you you can, fine. Those are not the interesting ones. The hard ones are the ones that are most interesting, right? The hard ones are the places where, hey, we want to do a thing. Everybody agrees we should do it. There's one proposal on the table, but it has all these bad things associated with it. Well, okay, what are we gonna do about that? Do we just take it? Do we delay it? Do we say, hey, well, maybe there's this other feature that if we do that first, this will work out better. Um, how does this, if, if we do this, <laughs> are we painting ourselves into a corner? 
Right. And so this is where, again, you're having that core team of people that uh, has some continuity and has perspective, has some of the historical understanding is really valuable because you get, um, it's not just like one brain, you get the power of multiple people coming together to make good decisions. And then you get the best out of all these people. And you also can harness the the community around it. And what about like the decision of whether like in Python, having one type or having, a, you know, uh, strict typing? Yeah. Okay. Types? Yeah, let's talk about this. So, so um, I, I like how you put that, by the way. Like, so, so many people would say that Python doesn't have types. Doesn't have types. Yeah, but you're well, right. I've listened to you enough to where. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm I'm a fan of yours, and I've listened to way too many podcasts and videos you of you talking about this. Oh well, yeah, so I would argue that Python has one type, and so um, so like when you import Python into Swift, which by the way works really well, you have everything comes in as a Python object. Now, yeah. here are their trade offs because. Um, uh, you know, it depends on where you're optimizing for. And Python is a super successful language for a really good reason. Um, because it has one type, uh, you get duct typing for free and things like this. But also, you're pushing, you're making it very easy to, to pound out code on the one hand, but you're also making it very easy to introduce uh, complicated bugs that you have to debug. And you pass a string into something that expects an integer, and it doesn't immediately die. It goes all the way down the stack trace and you find yourself in the middle of some code that you really didn't want to know anything about and it blows up and you're just saying, well, what did I do wrong, right? And so types are good and bad and they have trade-offs. They're good for performance and certain other things depending on where you're coming from, but it's, it's all about trade-offs. And so this is, this is what design is, right? Design is about weighing trade-offs and trying to understand the ramifications of the, the things that you're weighing, like types or not, or one type or many types. Um, but also within many types, how powerful do you make that type system is another very complicated question uh, with lots of trade-offs. It's very interesting, by the way. Uh, but uh, but that's like one one dimension. And yeah. there's a bunch of other dimensions, JIT compiled versus static compiled, garbage collected versus reference counted, versus memory man manual memory management versus, you know, like in like all these different trade-offs and how you balance them are what make a program language good. Concurrency. Yep. So in all those things, I guess, uh, when you're designing the language, you also have to think of how that's going to get all compiled down to... If you uh, care about performance, yeah. Well, and, and go back to Lisp, right? So Lisp, also I would say JavaScript are, is another example of a very simple language, right? And so one of the... So I also love Lisp. I don't use it as yeah. much as maybe you do yeah, or you I, did. No, but, I think we're both everyone who loves Lisp, it's like, you love, it's like, uh, I don't know, you know, I love Frank Sinatra, but like, how often do I seriously listen to Frank Sinatra? Sure, sure. <laughs> so. but, but, but you look at that, or you look at JavaScript, which is another very different, but relatively simple language. And there's certain things that don't exist in the language, mm -hmm. but there's, there is inherent complexity to the problems that we're trying to model. And so what happens to the complexity? In the case of uh, both of them, for example, you say, well, what about large scale software development? Okay, well, you need something like packages. Neither language has a like language affordance for packages. And so what you get is patterns. You get mm -hmm. things like NPN. You get things like, you know, like these ecosystems that get built around. And I'm a believer that if you don't uh, model at least the most important inherent complexity in the language, then what ends up happening is that complexity gets pushed elsewhere. And when it gets pushed elsewhere, sometimes that's great because often building things as libraries is very flexible and very powerful and allows you to evolve and things like that. But often it leads to a lot of uh, unnecessary divergence in the force and fragmentation. Yeah. And and when that happens, you just get kind of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and so the question is, how do you how do you balance that? Uh, don't put too much stuff in the language because that's really expensive and it makes things complicated. But how do you model enough of the inherent complexity of the problem that um, you provide the framework and the structure for people to th think about. 